My name is Ross Martin. I'm one of your uh, fellow members of the congregation, and it is my uh, delight uh, and heartbreak to be celebrating this moment with you of the moving on of our dear minister, friend, colleague, brother, uh, example, all six foot five of glory that he is, <laughs> the Reverend Anthony Jenkins this evening, this afternoon. Thank you so much for coming. We're just going to spend a little time together um, honoring this gentleman who has uh, been a part of us for a few years. And uh, we'll have a couple of times for brief comments. And we'll, as Paige will say, we'll, we'll ask you to keep it tight because we have a lot of folks in the room with a lot of sentiments to share. So don't tell the, don't tell the sherry, sh hairy dog, or what do they call him? The shaggy dog story. Um, share, share, the, share the bullet point. Um, and we are going to have some music, we're going to have some, some sharing. And this is a time for us to reflect on what this experience has been like to have our intern come and um, turn into uh, a full-fledged minister. When the thing that he was all, all the time, ever since he's been with us, but in, is now more than just in self, is also has this little thing he can put, the reverend thing he can put in, in front of his name. So first, I would like to introduce uh, our senior minister, Reverend Paige Getty, who is going to open us up. You're not required to stand, but I just need you to be up front with me here. You may stand. So, I'm not making him hold my hand or anything. So, seven, not six, years ago, I would be embarrassed to describe to you what it took for me to figure out the date, but I did it. And it was seven years ago, Sunday, October 28th, 2012. I was standing outside of Sanctuary B after worship, as was my custom, to greet people as they left the sanctuary, and there was this visitor in line waiting to speak with me. And he was, shall we say, conspicuous. <laughs> when it was his turn in line, he told me that he would be enrolling in Meadville Lombard Theological School the following year and would need a teaching pastor and an internship site and was wondering if I and we might serve those roles for him. I was skeptical. <laughs> I was nearly certain that I had never seen this man before. I knew nothing about him, and why in the world would he be choosing me and us, apparently on the spot and after his first visit? But I agreed that I would meet him to hear more. So a couple weeks later, I got an email from an address that had Major 7 Flat 5 as its username. Hi, Aaron. Welcome. And I was like, huh? What's that? He did later explain it to me. I still don't really understand. I know, I know many of you. Oh, here it goes. Major seven, flat five. The jazz chord. Right, the jazz chord. This email said in part, I found it too. My name is Anthony Jenkins. I attended one of your services a few weeks back and we talked for a bit afterwards. I had been checking out a handful of UU churches in the area, but I was very much drawn into the spirit 
People, atmosphere, music, diversity, feel of your fold. I understand this now and did not then. It was years later when I first heard Anthony say more about his experience of that morning, and in particular of sitting next to Phil Webster, listen, who was decidedly not weird, <laughs> right? <laughs> Unlike some of the people that Anthony had met in the other congregations he was visiting. So it took me a while to respond to Anthony's email. Remember, I was pretty skeptical still. But he was persistent. And we finally got together about a week and a half before Christmas that year. Going into that meeting, definitely skeptical. You may remember we were in the middle of fundraising for our building campaign. We had hired Karin on a very short-term contract, and so we were talking about being in search for an assistant minister pretty soon. We had an intern minister at the time, and I found supervision to be meaningful, but also a lot of work. And I just didn't trust that someone could feel as confident about wanting to work with me and UUCC with such little exposure to us. I remember telling Karin and Maureen as I went into this meeting that I was going to have the meeting, but I was already practicing how to say no to him. <laughs> yeah, right? About two hours later, Anthony has exited the building, and I'm going to laugh, so I probably can't do this, but I probably walked, you know, all of our offices were right there together. I probably walked over and went, I can't say no. <laughs> I was invigorated and exhausted by the conversation we had, but in the best way. Our time together that day was deep and broad. And I watched and listened as Anthony made connections and meaning, as he skillfully used metaphors, as he revealed to me the essence that was calling him into ministry and military chaplaincy. It was a gift. That day, I got a glimpse of the man, the chaplain, the minister, who has become for me a colleague, a partner, and a teacher. Anthony has brought a wealth of gifts. His intuition, his intellect, his gentleness, his insight, his poetry, his music, his flexibility. He has brought, as we experienced this morning, an unmatched, unique sense of artistry in crafting worship, worship symphony, with intricate parts, every single piece meaningful, not a single superfluous moment. And we are going to miss him viscerally. I will miss him viscerally. I have treasured the moments when Anthony and I have talked about Unitarian Universalism and parish ministry and the military, about our families of origin and childhood memories about Myers-Briggs and Enneagram and astrology and love languages, about parenting and marriage and relationships, about UUCC's personality and personalities. When you returned from parental leave last week, the first thing I said to you was, I've missed my thought partner. There are many things I will miss about you, but that will be the greatest personal loss. Over the years, time and again, I need all of you to hear this. This is why I wrote it. I need to say it. You have helped clarify my thinking 
and deepen my understanding of many things, of me, of this congregation. You have made me a better minister. And this congregation, guaranteed, is richer because you have been among us. Anthony, you have thanked me for trusting you. And it is true that I have trusted you, and you have been deserving of that trust. But today, I want to thank you for trusting me. Because you trusted me and you trusted all of us with your own questions and vulnerabilities and ministerial formation, and I cherish that trust. It has been a sacred honor to share these last seven years with you. Thank you. We will now hear from Michael Adcock and Tom Monroe. And I think Michael wants to say a few words. You're just going to do it for the lectern. So in honor of Anthony and his time here with us at UCC, I'd like to offer up a short jazzy solo piano arrangement of George Gershwin's song, after which Tom Monroe will come up and join me in a beautifully meditative piece by Keith Jarrett called Belonging. But before I do that, I just want to say just a few words of thanks to Anthony. First, for being that most positively patient, provocative presence here, both as poet and prophet to our congregation, and for offering contemplative and sometimes controversial sermon and service content, truly afflicting our comfort in the necessary ways, but in, our, in your gentle manner of offering reflective and wise insight into difficult and challenging topics that demanded that we sit and contemplate our occasional discomfort. For this and all your many other talents, we are grateful and probably won't experience the true absence of until you are sadly no longer with us. As a fellow musician, I have to thank you also on behalf of Tom Benjamin as well, since Tom was here for most of the duration of your tenure with us. Thank you for offering your exceedingly rare and abundant musical gifts in playing, singing, organizing, selecting music, your services, as Paige stole my mojo with a symphony metaphor, but your services were more than just pleasant component parts, but honestly and truly a symphonic score of beautifully integrated content embodied both in masterful storytelling and all the necessary complementary emotional feels. On a more personal note, I want to express appreciation for your subtle yet convincing ability to persuade me to sing in public multiple times. <laughs> and to politely yet firmly encourage me to let go and trust that all will be okay if we didn't work out all the details and all the notes and rhythms in advance. <laughs> Believing in ourselves and the universe for a potential and often beautiful outcome of collaboration. In his opera, Porgy and Bess, the, the character of Sport and Life sings, it ain't necessarily so, it ain't necessarily so. The things that you're liable to read in the Bible, it ain't necessarily so. I always thought that this tune and text were a perfect Unitarian Universalist song and utterance, and I've been looking for the right opportunity to learn this fun yet challenging piano arrangement by the composer Beryl Rubinstein. So here goes.
So I do want to say that when we were back, when I came back to work in August and we realized we had a party to plan, I reached out to members of Anthony's Committee on Ministry, membership folks, and the Karuna team, because that's who Anthony had worked most closely with over the last two years, and said, hey, who wants to make this party happen? And Stuart Tenhor said, yes. Thank you, Stuart. Stuart is not the only one who said yes, but I will miss somebody if I try to thank everybody, and he has a list. Hi, everybody. I'm Stuart. So we had a great team. We met a couple times, and everybody felt a beloved feeling that we've all known from Anthony. So we got Betty Jackson, um, Sally Ann Cooper. We have uh, Mark Brooks. Glenn or Shirley, and we have, uh, who else is on the team that's here? Yeah, Phil and Mary and Jenna. Jenna did a lot of work, and I, and Bernie. Yes, Bernie Rock. So real briefly, Anthony, it's been a pleasure to be part of this, and I saw you come in as a raw recruit, and you became awesome, so thanks very much. Um, I just wanted to share one memory, Sally Ann Cooper, uh, that I will never forget, and I know you will never forget, and the most beautiful, one of the most beautiful happenings in my life was your ordination. So I think it was, must have been about six years ago that Tom, Benjen, Tom Benjamin and I um, were in my basement, and Tom said, we got to check out this new minister that's coming on board, see what he can do in terms of uh, playing some jazz. So he carted his huge bass down the sta stairs in his rather huge frame, and within minutes it was clear who was auditioning who, as Tom will remember. Um, and I just want to thank Anthony. You know, we haven't played that much, really, but it's been such a joy. I feel like I've blossomed in some ways that I wouldn't have even imagined, and I really appreciate it. Oh, I'm supposed to tell you, I'm Jim Stiver. <laughs> Hi, I'm Sue Filson, and Anthony, I've met lots of smart people in my life. 
I went to the University of Michigan. Of course, I met lots of smart people. But then I met you, and I thought, this guy is a genius. He is truly a gifted genius. And because we don't want him to leave, he already told me what we need to do. We need to get a coalition of people, go to the Pentagon, go to the five-star generals, and say, put him at Andrews Air Force Base so he can stay with us. Right? OK. We're going to miss you so much. Good afternoon. My name is Katya Fort Roden. I haven't been, I've been absent for a while, but I had to be here today, Anthony, to say farewell. Um, I know from the very moment that I saw your presence, I, I, my, my imagery of, of you was like a comet, like one of those things you see once in a lifetime. And I've had a very love-hate feeling because it's one of those relationships that you don't want to get too involved in because you know you're going to break up. <laughs> and so I've kind of felt like this, this fear of getting caught in your orbit because I did not want to, to feel that loss. And, and so I've always had this kind of tug of war with the energy that I have felt and the attraction that I have felt to your positive energy. Um, but I feel so blessed to have um, experienced your presence in my life. And um, I think true love for a person is when you lose them, but you want so much, you wish so much for their, their well-being when, when they're not here. So those are my love-hate for you. <laughs> Hi, I'm Joyce Wunderberg. And um, Anthony, I just want to say I so admire the integration of your intellect and your feelings and your music, and it always makes me feel whole. And I greatly, greatly appreciate that. Thank you. Hi, I'm Steve Von Hagen Jamar, and it is relevant. I teach at Howard University School of Law. Uh, and uh, I got to know Anthony first when I invited him to sit down and talk with me about when we were building this new building. Uh, and I thought, okay, as a junior minister coming in, this would be an opportunity that he wouldn't have for when he becomes a parish minister. Of course, at this time, I didn't know that wasn't the direction he was intending to go. A couple of years later, go on, and uh, he stops me in the hall and says, I'd like to ask you to, and I said yes, before he finished the sentence, because I knew Anthony pretty well at that time. Turns out he was inviting me to be on his ministerial committee. Well, this was a great honor. I was delighted to do this because now I had the opportunity to spend the next two years convincing him to be a parish minister. <laughs> and I failed. Um, uh, but no, it's quite clear that Anthony's calling is where he is going to be a minister uh, in the service, uh, working with the servicemen. And it has been such an honor and a joy to be working with Anthony and to meet with him every couple of months with this incredible committee that he pulled together. Uh, and so I just want to thank you for that, that experience. And then um, uh, to quote something that he said this morning in the service is that, um, you know, there are some gifts that you get and no matter how good they are, they have to be unwrapped. Uh, and then sometimes you need batteries. Um, well, you know, Anthony has, I think, in fact, unwrapped some of our gifts and has indeed energized us as well. And um, one last bit about coming back to the uh, committee that designed this place, that had the architect design this place. Uh, Anthony's music, and Jim and everybody's music, has displayed the wisdom that we had of making this into a fabulous acoustic space. Yes. And so again, thank you, Anthony, for demonstrating sometimes we get it right. Anthony. <laughs> Um, I just want to thank you for seeing me and for talking to me and the connection. And I know that you have had that with not just me, but it, many, many people here. And that has been sacred. Hi, I'm Ray Millman. And obviously, I join all of you in all of your thoughts. Um, you know, it's hard to express how much we're going to miss Anthony. But I wanted to just add how much we're going to miss Sarah and Tobias and Genevieve or Genevieve and watching them grow and we expect some pictures. Please don't forget us. We love you. I'm Diane Dunlap and 
uh, I, I said this personally to Anthony, but I imagine I'm not the only one that feels this way, so I wanted to share it publicly. What I told him was, you can't go <laughs> because I'm not done with you yet. <laughs> I'm still hungry, and he suggested I should stay hungry. <laughs> and, uh, I figure anyone who greets us so regularly, hello, family, <laughs> that uh, whether he's here with us physically or just in our hearts, we'll still be together. And there's an ancient tradition among Native Americans that uh, with a peace pipe, they would give it to another tribe. And when they gave the peace pipe to the Europeans, they kept it and they hung it over their fireplace because they didn't understand the gift must move. So you are our gift, and it's okay for you to move on. <laughs> I'm Chris Ellen Johansson, is this on? Okay. Um, I, I sort of run the season souls uh, here at UUCC, and I was lucky enough to have um, Anthony as the staff person. And when I first started, I certainly didn't know what I was doing, but as a staff person, he always opened up the session and closed the session with amazing words. I mean, somehow, you know, I'd say, oh, we're, we're talking about marijuana this week. And he, and he somehow would come up with the appropriate opening <laughs> and, and closing. And <laughs> I quite frankly, Paige has, has said she'll step in, but I'm really going to miss your words. We're at 10 minutes, so there will be 10 more a little later in the program. <laughs> Good timing. Either one. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all so much. It is really, really an honor beyond an honor to be here. 2002 is when I met the guy that you all are calling Anthony, but who I know is blue. <laughs> and um, 2002, I was a young musician, and I met Blue uh, playing for a band. He happened to become the bass player for the band. Uh, he immediately impacted me by his passion for music and his animated uh, character when he played. Um, in 2005, uh, I was playing at a church, and I wound up getting uh, Blue there, uh, a job there. And it's when I first got a taste of his mind, because we used to talk, he used to talk about astrology and other things as far as philosophy of life when we would be on our break. <laughs> um, I learned a lot then, and it meant a lot. In 2000, we, we continued to play music together and see each other um, from time to time. In 2010, we had a conversation where uh, we decided that we were going to exchange gifts or teach each other. I was going to teach him. He wanted to learn piano, and I, was going to, uh, I wanted to learn bass. So we were going to trade uh, information. He came over my house, and at that time, I was going through what I would say was like a philosophical and spiritual evolution. And so I was reading and studying. He saw a book, which was Ask and It Is Given. And he said, he looked at me, and he said, before he sat down, he said, what do you know about that? And I looked at him and said, well, what do you know about that? <laughs> And, and we never had a lesson for instruments or anything. <laughs> Not one. Not one. What ensued from there was an unfolding of a friendship that means a lot to me today. We met every Thursday from that point on for about a year or so and figured out the keys of life together. <laughs> We, 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 were, we became confidants, we became friends. It, it just, it unfolded from there. So I'm honored to be able to stand here today. The last thing I want to say about that journey is I remember the, the, the day when he said to me that he was going to walk this particular walk and become a minister. And I understood it so well because it, of how it fit his personality and how, like he said, that's what he was already doing in life for each and every person, myself included. I could attest to it. So to be able to stand here today after being there for that initial thought 
is, I mean, I'm honored. So in 2012, in, end of 2011, as I was going through another transition similar to where he is today, a song came to me. I wrote a song called Home. And the song has three melodies, and I feel like it's appropriate to share it today. The first theme is about the curiosities and the questions of life, the things we all ask ourselves and try to figure out day to day. The second theme is about going out there, experiencing something, living, finding, finding it out as far as what you're curious about, taking some risk, you know, meeting some people, doing some things. And then the final theme is about when you find your place at home. The thing about it is that this song isn't a, a song about a finite moment. It's about each step of the journey when you find your new place. And so because that is what it is, I feel like it's appropriate. And I hope you enjoy. And this is, this is my dedication. Thank you. Thank you. 
One of our own, Jean Jocklick, is now going to come up and share a special reading with us, and I do hope she'll talk a little bit about the meaning of it as well. We are running about 10 minutes behind. We were supposed to finish around 10 after, and it looks like we're a little bit uh, behind, so just keep that in mind in your comments, and I hope you'll stick around. One of my favorite things about you, Anthony, is that you embrace the whole. You embrace that which hurts. You embrace that which holds. You embrace all the things. And <clears throat> I learned something about this by reading poetry. Uh, starting in my early 20s, I, for whatever reason, I, I couldn't understand T.S. Eliot. It was way beyond me at the time. I didn't have the life's experience, but there was something about not knowing that I stayed with it. And I kept carrying around with me and holding on to it. So there was an early sermon and Anthony didn't quote T.S. Eliot, but by golly, I knew, that's T.S. Eliot right there. <laughs> that's all that is. You know, it's all the themes. And so that's when I got on to you about your sermon, what your sermon is. So Paige, you have a sermon. And I actually, we picked UUCC because we thought that pay, uh, that, that you know, well, this was a sermon, this was a place where uh, the minister didn't repeat themselves. Actually, there is no place where a minister does not repeat themselves. It's just they say it a lot of different ways. You with your music, with your words, with that space between. That's where the love is. That's the fulcrum that turns that wholehearted circle. And that's how I read this to you and to all of you. This first reading is from uh, Bernd Norton, the first quartet. At the still point of the turning world, neither flesh nor fleshless, neither movement from nor towards. At the still point, there the dance is, where past and future are gathered, neither ascent nor decline, except for the point the still point, there would be no dance. And there's only the dance. I can only say there we have been, but I cannot say where, and I cannot say how long, for that is to place it in time. The inner freedom from the practical desire, the release from action, and suffering, released from the inner and the outer compulsion, yet surrounded by a sense of grace, a white light still and moving. And from the second quartet, East Coker. In my beginning is my end. In succession, houses rise and fall, crumble, are extended, are removed, destroyed, restored. Or in their place is an open field, or a factory, or a bypass 
Old stone to new building, old timber to new fires, old fires to ashes, and ashes to the earth. Home is where one starts from. As we grow older, the world becomes stranger, the pattern more complicated of dead and living, not the intense moment isolated with no before and after, but a lifetime burning in every moment. I said to my soul, be still and let the dark come upon you with a hollow rumble of wings, with the movement of darkness on darkness. I said to my soul, be still and wait. The darkness shall be the light and the stillness the dancing. Whisper of running streams and winter lightning, the laughter in the garden, echoed ecstasy, not lost, but requiring, pointing to agony of death and birth. Love is most nearly itself when here and now cease to matter. Here or there does not matter. We must be still and still moving into another intensity for a further union, a deeper communion. The wave cry, the wind cry, the vast waters of the petrel and the porpoise. I am here, or there, or elsewhere, in my end is my beginning. And the fourth quartet, Little Getting. This one is especially meaningful to me. I read this to my father in his passing. I don't know if it meant much to him. I don't know if he heard the words. I read them now, honoring all that is in this life and all that we all bring. What we call the beginning is often the end, and to make an end is to make a beginning. The end is where we start from. And every phrase and sentence that is right, where every word is at home, taking its place to support the others. An easy commerce of the old and the new. The complete consort dancing together Every phrase and every sentence is an end and a beginning. Every poem and epitaph, we die with the dying. See, they depart and we go with them. We are born with the dead. See, they return and bring us with them. History is a pattern of timeless moments with the drawing of this love and the voice of this calling, we shall not cease from exploration. And the end of all our exploring will to be arrive where we started and know the place for the first time through the unknown remembered gate when the last of earth left to discover is that which was the beginning. 
the voice of the hidden waterfall, half heard in the stillness. Quick, here, now, always, a condition of complete simplicity, costing not less than everything. And all shall be well. And all manner of thing shall be well. When the tongues of flame are enfolded into the crowned knot of fire, and the fire and the rose are one. Blessed be. I have a birthday coming up. I'm turning 55 soon. Anthony, do you know my birthday? Very close. There's a reason. Um, who knows the reason why he would know my birthday? Or anybody have a clue about this? So, when when I had exchanged phone numbers with Anthony a year and a half ago, he put my birthday in, or he put my name in as my birthday. That's all he put in. <laughs> and he said, and I looked, and that was all he had in his phone for contacts were birthdays, and he knew. That's how he knew people, by, by them. So I thought that was fascinating. I didn't expect him to be able to recall it, you know, without, without checking his phone. But it's just one of those things that uh, when you meet someone who, who turns the world a diff, in a different dimensional array and shares that with you, that's what being around Anthony has been like for me, and I think for many, as they've already expressed here. Um, I had the very great privilege, or I had the great honor of, of Anthony saying yes when I asked him if he would play bass on the CD that I was working on for the show that I do. And he said he would be happy to, and he, and he laid down tracks for four of the songs, and, and they are just remarkable what he did. I have a video of him, um, like with, and he did them all in two takes. He, w the second take, the first take was, okay, that's just great, and we could go with that, I could live with that. The second one was, no, let me, let me do it again, let me, let, me, let me get this. And occasionally we did a third one, but we didn't need to. Um, uh, it was just remarkable what he, what he came up with, and, and this exuberance that he had, intensity. In this one particular song I'm going to share, I asked him if he would play with me, and he said, you know, I'd really like to just uh, experience this day, so I'm going to play it by myself, but uh, you can hear it, you can listen to it on MissRainSong.com, uh, or any streaming media, if you want to hear Anthony's version. And this is uh, it's very appropriate for how Anthony has spoken into our lives. It's a perspective that we've seen something many times, but now we see it in a very different way because of how he shared with us. This is called Imagine.
Not a lot of through traffic passes by. It's the end of the line, the last scene of the show. There's no turning back, there ain't nowhere to go. Ready or not, dead or alive, you're already there by the time you arrive. It's just the luck of the draw. The roll of the dice, it's got nothing to do with who's been naughty or nice. It's the end of all time, for the time for all ends. And the best you can do is keep hanging ten on the edge, the edge of the world. few more minutes for sharing and then we have some gifts to give to Anthony and he's going to say a few words and then there's cake so but now I see Candy's hand and John and Amy and Phil and Nathan so I'm going to go this way and work my way to the middle Candy I'm going to start over here with John and come this way and Ross is going to start there we go here go ahead Okay. Um, my name is Phil Webster, and Paige alluded to my little part of this story. Um, I've been called a lot of things in my life, but not quite weird. Is I'm not quite sure how to take that. Um, now, now, I remember the day that you came in quite well, but I'm old, so maybe it's not exactly as clear as it ought to be. But after we sat down and we chatted for a while, I mean, this huge guy comes in, sits down, and we talk for a while, and then he goes on, and I was just jumping up and down over this guy. So I think I remember sending you an email telling you you've really got to talk to this guy, and really he should come here. Um, based on what you said, apparently I wasn't quite as persuasive as I thought I, <laughs> as I ought to be. <clears throat> um, so I, I think I kind of got it right with your selection and your coming here. Um, and I would like to thank you for all of the challenges, even this morning. You know, I felt this morning you were talking straight at me, you know, get my shit together and let, let's do these things right. <clears throat> However, I was sort of disappointed that Voodoo Child sort of got skipped over in the first service. And I don't know if we're ever going to hear that again, but I would look forward to it. But thank you for everything, absolutely everything you have given to this congregation. John Guy over here. John Guy over here. Reverend Anthony, I finally can call you Reverend again. You remember how long it took for me to be able to call you Reverend? I ask you every third week, can I call you Reverend yet? And you finally said one day, yeah, I made it. Good for you. Now, the big message I really want to give is about a characteristic of Reverend Anthony that nobody else has touched as yet, and that's his military bearing. His military bearing is tops. I remember the first time he stood in that pulpit in full-dress blues. Now, I don't see full-dress blues very much except when generals are around over at Fort Meade. So when we as a congregation had this minister, this six foot six fella just never stopped going up, full dress blues, and he started the service by saying, would everybody who served in the U.S. Army stand up? Five of us stood up. Would everybody who has served in the U.S. Navy stand up? Another 10 stood up. Would everybody who has served in the U.S. Marines please stand up? Maybe one or two stood up. But everybody who served in the U.S. Air Force, please stand up. Then he asked, does any, anybody who has somebody in their family in the military, please stand up? About a third of the congregation stood up. And when, then he said, would everybody in this congregation who cares for the military, please stand up? Everybody stood up. And I will say, sir, you do great honor 
to this concept called patriotism. It's a wonderful change from what we read in the papers about what's going on downtown. And I will also, Reverend, you got 25 years to serve as a chaplain or so, and I want to let you know, come on back here when you finish. <laughs> Hi, Anthony. Uh, my name is Louise. I wanted to speak as a fellow UU clergy today and a colleague of yours and Paige. And just remember what um, Mark Morrison Reed has said about ministry, that it is this strange calling to fall in love with a congregation and then say goodbye. And in the saying goodbye, there is a, a grief. And I remember well the first time I met you here, when you held my grief from having left River Road in the tractor beam of your presence, which I'm sure many of you have experienced, um, bringing out something in you that you didn't know was coming. Um, so I thank you for the way that you've changed this space and how the best ministers bring out the best gifts in congregations and remind you all in the bittersweet moment that that goes with you. The best of you is here in you because of Anthony, and, and we'll go on. So blessings, blessings, fellow mystic. Hi, I'm Candy Wachterman, and as I sat here, I thought back to the first time that I interacted with Anthony, not necessarily the first time I saw him or the first time I should have felt I met him, but I was walking out their door, and I stopped and thanked him for the wonderful sermon he had given. And he turned to me in the most humble way and said, oh, really? I said, yes. He said, that's the first sermon I've ever done. <laughs> now, whether that was really the first sermon he had ever done, but it certainly was the first sermon here. And I was blown away. I was like, wait a second. You know, you've got three years. You know, you're going to grow. You know, and you have grown, Anthony. But I have to say that the sermon today was as moving on many, many levels. I don't remember the topic of that first sermon, but I do remember the gentleman who gave that sermon and how impressed and how fortunate I felt that we had him as our intern. I think at that point he may not have been the reverend yet, but he might as well have been. It was like he'd been practicing for years. So um, I've been jotting down quick notes and I'm not gonna talk for long and that's why I did this. Thank you for your open, generous, caring, and humble contributions to this congregation. Uh, I speak from Karuna's point of view and say thank you for your gentle, silent, but sometimes very clear guidance. Thank you. We really have gained from your presence. I don't want people to understand when I use this word, ladies, that this is something Anthony, when he would write to me, would say, and to many of us, he'd say, gentle ladies, and then he would go on with whatever he had to say. Gentle is what Anthony truly is. We will miss our gentle guide. Hi, I'm Staff Sergeant Nathan Sanchez, and sir, I would just like to say, I can't begin to express how glad I feel that we are getting someone like you to serve alongside. Someone so powerfully peaceful and peacefully powerful, and thank you. Hi, I'm Amy Brooks, and I think that Anthony is really good at holding a space without being judgmental. We had a board meeting one time, and I was talking about how I cry privately, like nobody can see me in church because I'm crying because people are so happy or you know, they're so sad, or they're so brave, or so this or that. And then I said to him, oh, but I can see you really clearly. Does that mean you can see me when I'm crying? And he's like, mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I remember feeling um, humbled in the idea that, like, the shared experience of the emotion that comes every Sunday when you get to kind of sit in the space and to process the week and have somebody who's not judgmental guiding that is really important. And I also realized while well, freaking Aaron was playing that one of the reasons why I cry the most is when, if you ever read The Alchemist by um, Paulo Coelho, the Brazilian writer, he talks about your personal legend. And I realized that, where's Anne? 
Oh, dude, I cried the whole, I pulled my nose ring out, I was crying, sorry. But, like, just such beauty, and I think that's the reason why so many of us feel so strongly, is you're living in your personal legend, and we got to be a part of it. So thank you. Real quick, I'm Amy Forno, and I want you to know that, to me, you are the sacred masculine. And I thank you so much for that. So Jenna Rose and Bernie Rock will ask you to come up to the lectern. Go ahead. Um, they both served on Anthony's Committee on Ministry and have a couple of gifts from the congregation to offer. So one, one gift we're offering is this wonderful little book. Um, as you can see, a three-ring binder. Um, and with it are many of the sentiments that you have all shared some on this page, many on the cards that were collected throughout the Sundays. So you'll be able to take this with you and have something to read and remember and you know, and you'll have room to add more. So. so Reverend, um, as part of your ministerial committee person, all that they have said about you is just wonderful. But you know what we've always told you. You've got five, five minutes. minutes yeah. <laughs> Anthony, to all... Uh, so we've, we've made this um, little treasure chest for you of the congregation's sentiments that they have expressed every Sunday. And we have collected it in this little box that we hope you will carry with you um, everywhere and especially in the trenches. And this is the uh, inscription. Anthony, to all branches and in all seasons, may you be a firm sounding board and comforting presence with a soft heart that feels for the human condition with love and blessings in your UUCC family. I am wearing this apron because when we first met via email and you asked me to be part of your committee, I said, I said, um, it's very easy to do this because to serve others to the end is the best joy. Congratulations, my brother. Oh, I just need to say one more thing. You can't take those away. You have to give them back because next Sunday you'll be here, right? And some other people who are not here may want to add something. So I do not have a check to put in your hand yet, but I'm lucky that I get to tell you that more than 70 gifts have been given, which is 70 households, not 70 individuals, still coming in this morning. But as of this morning, we had collected over $6,000 to give to Genevieve and Tobias. because we love their dad, and we love them. Carla has some words to say on behalf of the board and herself, and then we are going to let Anthony say some words, and I think that he's agreed to do a special thing with us that I'm gonna, that I'm gonna orchestrate. Does that sound right to you? <laughs> I know, right? We're confused. Fare thee well, fare thee well. Dearest Anthony, how can we who are leaders properly honor someone whose light we have followed and say goodbye? Well, how will we fare? You have graced us with your resonant baritone voice as its vibration manifested poetry, mystery, and meditation. Fare thee well as your sound fills the new worlds you will inhabit. 
We will miss the prose of your sermons, the creativity of your reflections, and the beauty of your music and your presence. That music, not just from the past, but our present, bringing us a fuller American song, that of the enslaved and the descendants, that of recent Latinx immigrants, as well as classic 70s rock, or 80s rock, or 90s rock, and the five black people are still waiting for their P-Funk service, but y'all feel me. <laughs> Fare thee well as your composition creates a new soundtrack for your life. You have always invited us to relate to those whose experiences are universal, but not always noted. Black and Puerto Rican soldiers, I would add the military, folks, any folks in the military. Scientists who are women and men of color, those who were brought here in slave ships, brave opera singers, there's always a connection and a stretch. There it is, a stretch. Know that our love, kindness, warm wishes, prose, poetry, and song will stretch to journey with you wherever you go. Our love knows no bounds. Our voices travel with you, as does our joy at seeing you thrive, creating, composing your family, fulfilling your mission on this earth in this land. Wherever you go, wherever you are, and yes, in that great getting up morning, fare thee well, fare thee well, on your road as you travel, fare thee well, fare thee well. mentioned how moving, that's an understatement, Anthony's ordination ceremony was. How many of you were here that night, right? So many of us shared that experience. And I think for many of us, one of the most moving moments, although that's hard to say, right? But in that service was the laying on of hands. I think for many of you, perhaps you hadn't experienced that ritual before, but Reverend Rebecca Savage, one of our colleagues, um, led that and had everybody either touching Anthony or touching someone who was touching Ant Anthony. And then we had this moment of silence that was electric. It was powerful as we blessed Anthony and his ministry physically and with ourselves. And so as Anthony says a few words to us, I invite you to remember that as he offers himself back to us. Good afternoon, family. <laughs> Thank you, firstly. Um, for this, but for seven years of holding the space for me, I, I'm trying to be better about receiving gifts from people. I, just, I used to be a person that you could not give anything to. Who said, no, I'm good, don't, no, I'm, no, please don't. But that doesn't allow people to give you stuff that you've given to. Sometimes people want to be able to say things to you, and I so appreciate everything that y'all have poured into this space, I cannot tell you. Um, what these years have meant to me. I was the same essence when I came here, but I was much less unwrapped. That's what I would say. You all have greatly unwrapped me with your presence. You have allowed me to do stuff that really could not be done anywhere else. So as much as it's me bringing it to you, like the service this morning could not happen anywhere else on earth, probably. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Like it's as much me as you. There, I could think of like five services off the top of my head that I've been able to offer here 
in partnership with you that would not have happened anywhere else. And so it's a, this is a very unique space that I could show up in the fullness of me and do that. And so my gratitude is to you for that. I'm not an easy person to know. Paige and I talked about this a little while ago. I'm, uh, we did this interesting metaphor thing together. I'm, I'm like a canyon, right? Paige is like a garden. Garden is perfect for parish ministry because you can eat off of it a little bit. You can get some tomatoes and some radishes and some whatever. You know, like you can eat off, it's not too much, feeds you, it doesn't overload you, right? I overload generally because I'm a canyon. But for chaplaincy, that's perfect because I might only see you once. And for, for what I'm going into, it's people who are dealing with a level of depth of trauma and a depth of experience that requires that. So I might only touch you once. You might only come see the canyon once. That's enough for you. You all have visited a canyon for seven years, which would fatigue many people. <laughs> And I forget that. I show up in depth. I forget that not everybody does that. So thank you for coming with me while I dug into stuff. And thank you for digging in. And thank you for bearing with me when stuff went 10 minutes over, 15 minutes over, <laughs> when we dug into something pretty heavy in your heart and you had to sit and work with it. You know, thank you for showing up that way. Whatever I've been able to do here is as much because of the spirit that you have provided me. And so thank you for all that you have been for me in my process of formation. I was very different when I got here. Same essence, but I was divorced. I had no kids. I was really just a bass player stepping into ministry. I, wasn't, I was doing it. You know, I was being it, but I hadn't started doing it yet. So it was my first sermon, Candy. It was. And I was terrified to do it. I thought that preaching would be my least favorite class in seminary. I remember sharing with Paige. I thought it would be my least favorite thing. And I'm still an introvert. Like, I don't, I really don't like being the center of attention, but to craft an experience that we share together, if I can get out of the way and be a vessel for something that comes through and heals hearts, touches people, I can do that. And you all have given me the space to do that. And I will never forget these years. I mean, these are very formative years. You have been with me for the time that I got married, you know, the right time, for the time that I became a parent, for the time that I became a chaplain, for the time that I'm now almost switching branches, for you've been present with me for all of these major, major, major life switches, probably more than you know. And it has been, even when it's been hard, it's been a joy to show up here and serve you all. And I will never, 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 never forget you all in my journey, in my tapestry. I will never forget these years. They are more formative than you know. And I really appreciate all the presence that you have brought to me. And so thank you for giving me the space. What's the slide? Where's Carla? Thank you for letting me be myself, right? Thank you for letting me be myself again. Blessed be, right? to do a laying on of hands and I'm assuming we all have permission to touch each other's shoulder or back. <laughs> We're going to lay on hands on Anthony and send prayers. That's right, I have to take my shoes off. Send prayers and uh, well wishes, love, whatever works for you, holding him in the light and that's what we will do. So please, touch someone and know through that touching that you are reaching to Anthony and to every minister. And I lay my hand upon the shoulders and feel that energy right now and know that this extends out beyond this congregation to all congregations, not just Unitarian Universalist, but all, all faith traditions because we are all one. 
And this is a truth. We bless you, Anthony, as you go forward in your journey. We hold you in our hearts, and we know you hold us in yours. Blessed be, Ashe. May I sing a song, and if you know it, join in. Where you go, I will go, beloved. Where you go, I will go. Where you go, I will go, beloved. Where you go, I will go. For your people are my people. Your people are mine. Your people are my people. Your divine, my divine. Where you go, I will go, beloved. Where you go, I will go. Where you go, I will go, beloved. Where you go, I will go. For your people are my people. Your people are mine. Your people are my people. Your divine, my divine. Your divine, my divine. Ashe.